My name is Joshua. I work at the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union, the NGO which is hosting this event. Um, I'm very honored to speak to you and please because um, actually I'm not a fundraiser. I'm the head of administration at the HCLU, but um, so you might wonder why I'm here. Um, one of our best practices, we believe, is that um, everybody in our organization is involved in fundraising. So we do have a fundraiser, but <laughs> <laughs> but everybody helps out. So we try to, you know, we're we're very fond of creativity and innovation and mobilization, and and we really do believe that fundraising is group effort, and that everybody should take part. Um, our fundraising strategy is um, our fundraising strategy is built specifically around our NGO, which is a human rights NGO, and um, we deal with all aspects of um, human rights, including political freedom, patients' rights, drug policy, um, data protection, Roma rights. So, um, and we constantly monitor the state and the government. So our number one um, rule about fundraising is that we don't accept funding from the Hungarian state, the government, or any of its institutions. We also, this is for us in order to keep our credibility and our independence. We also don't expect, accept money from any political parties or churches. Um, so our campaigns, all our fundraising, we have to exclude the state funding and we have to focus on other donors. These could be individual donors, major donors, corporations, and we even accept funding from other states and other governments, but not the Hungarian one. Um, in Hungary, I don't know whether you are familiar with this, some people from Romania and Poland might be familiar with it. There's, um, there's a chance for taxpayers to donate 1% of their annual taxes to any chosen um, public benefit it's organization. 2%. 2%. That was better than 1%. <laughs> so um, so um, what we do is um, every year, oh, and this is, you know, there's a very big race on for this 1% because we have to, we have to, be better, or we have to um, we have to race against you know foundations, animal rights foundations, and foundations dealing with sick children. But even though there are these um, bigger causes, we still manage to do exceptionally well each year because we we launch a campaign on different um, platforms with different strategies and different timing. Um, one of these pla platforms is Facebook. Um, the HCLU has 13, more than 13,000 fans on, fa on Facebook. And our drug policy program, which has a separate Facebook page, they also have 15,000 fans. So Facebook is a channel for us where we can directly reach 28,000 people, or shall we say potential donors. And if we manage to provide content that is worth um, worthy of liking and sharing, then this number exponentially grows. So, um, um, so we so we really strive to you know during this one percent campaign, we really strive to bring interesting um, and not rarely humorous content so that people will share and like it. So our communication reaches many more people. Um, oh, I forgot to do my crazy thing. Uh oh, sorry. <laughs> I think I'm carried away. <laughs> Let me just give a couple of ahead. Um, yeah, really sorry about this. What is the name? Where did this go? Okay. So um, another thing we do with the 1% campaign is every year we try to do something um, creative and innovative compared to the previous year. And I brought you a couple of examples. Unfortunately, both of these videos are in Hungarian. 
The first video I'm going to show you is a viral video, which had 40,000 views. It, um, it's tied to a drug policy program. Um, they wanted to make the, um, so um, they want to make stricter laws on, on users of drugs. So we made this little viral video. So I'd like to show you this. Okay, so what it basically says is that um, every fourth person has tried drugs, and um, if they, if um, the regulation, the stricter regulation goes through, then these every fourth person could potentially be jailed for two years. So this is a way of making, um, you know, when they write in the law, it's complicated. It's black text on white paper. <coughs> People don't really, it doesn't come through. But when you you make a visual um, presentation of it, then it somehow somehow it hits them more. So we had actually we actually had forty thousand views. So it says if you don't want, um, if you want to have, um, please donate to the HCR Youth Drug Policy Program, so that we can we can fight for uh, a better drug policy, basically. Um, this is going to be another. Um, short video. We made this last year for our campaign. Um, this was our innovation for that um, year. It's called Story Design. And even though the HCLU has many, um, deals with many aspects of human rights, somehow we had to, in a couple of minutes, we had to show what we work with and why it's important for people to support our cause. So, This first, um, this first little part is about um, patient rights. When you go to the doctor, you know you're not a small person, but you do have rights. Um, this is for our um, freedom of um, for information program. How we try to uncover things. That's good. Um, this is data protection. We work so that you can protect your um, privacy. Um, this is for a drug policy program. Would you like any of your friends to sit in jail for smoking a joint? And um, how the state should spend more on treatment and education instead of um, penalizing the drug users. And that they should they shouldn't be jailed, but they should get medical treatment. This is about um, those living with um, um, intellectual disability, and they um, they usually put these people in large institutions. This is about this is for a Roma program. It's against the discrimination. This is also about freedom of information about journalists, you know, that they be allowed to write what they uncover. <coughs> we do not accept money from the state. Do we have to explain why? 
So, please donate one percent to CHCIU. So this is like a two-minute little thing, but I think I think it I think it shows very clearly that with really innovative ideas, even though you have a very complex and um, and difficult message to relay, it can be done because we managed to put all our programs into these two minutes with just a couple of drawings. Um, is anyone helping you with that or you develop it yourself? No, actually we had, we had a company who does this, but, but they also support us, so they, they made this at a very low price for us. So this was also you know, part of our fundraising <laughs> strategy. Um, what we also do during this 1% <coughs> is that um, actually every, every year we have two or three um, events or parties we organize. And um, one of these is always timed during the 1% campaign. And, um, and what hap happens there is we, we, want to make a, we want to organize a party. So the first thing we do is we try to look for a place you know, venue where actually we could hold our party maybe free of charge. We also try to get bands and DJs to play for us, either free or ch free of charge, or for a very friendly price. And um, what? One moment, please. Yes. So at these parties, we don't collect. We're not allowed to collect entrance fees due to some legal and administrative um, issues if not impossibility, but what we do is we, we can't accept donations. So when we have this party, there's no entrance fee, people come and they can donate to us. In return, they get to um, speak with our staff at the party about any, even either serious issues or just have a friendly conversation. It's a platform where we can, we can you know, give them our brochures and actually, we even have HCLU t-shirts, which are not for sale, but if you donate to us above a certain amount, then we give this to you for free. <laughs> okay, um, so actually it's a really good platform. And what do, what do these people get in return? Um, they feel that they're more involved in our activities. Um, and, um, and it makes them feel a lot better about our organization, you know, more knowing more and becoming more familiar with us. Um, I also, uh, I forgot to do this again. Okay, so <coughs> yeah, these are our parties. Um, I also got for you a couple of worst practices. Um, a couple of years ago, we had a lawsuit against a parking company in Hungary. It was a very big case. It was very much publicized because it involved millions of taxpayers, um, 40 or dollars or euros. Um, and um, we thought that this would be something, this would be an issue that people would be interested in. So what we tried to do was, um, in Hungary, if you park in the wrong spot and um, you get penalized, you get this little plastic bag on your windshield with a check in it. So what we did was we made plastic bags, but we didn't put the check in it. We wrote what we did in this case, how it was um, our success that led to um, people finding out where all this money was going that the parking companies were making. And we, we put these little um, bags on cars in an area where we thought that wealthier people lived. Um, we, made, we made almost no money with this at all, and we still don't know why. <laughs> so this was, you know, this was an idea. We tried it, it didn't work. We go on, try something else. Um, another worst practice of ours, I'm almost finished, was, um, I don't know whether you're familiar with um, critical mass. It's a big um, movement, bicycle movement. Um, actually, it's, um, it's a movement that, um, 
that promotes um, just the joys of um, cycling in general, but also the right to the cyclist, of the cyclist to the road. So, and they generate like thousands of people. So we thought that when they had this big critical mass movement, um, that we would do a raffle. We, we wanted to acquire um, bicycles, and um, we thought that um, in change for the donation, they would get a raffle ticket, and at the end, you know, somebody would win the bicycle. But um, it was a good idea, it was a solid idea. We had all our volunteers, we knew where we were gonna get the bikes, but unfortunately, this um, critical mass organization, the decision makers decided not to let us in on this event because um, it wasn't, um, they didn't let any other NGO into their event, so this didn't work either. And um, I think my time is up, but um, I just want to give you a few pointers. Um, um, be relevant, make your message comprehensible and easily digestible so that people understand what you're talking about. Because even though you work in, on these issues and you're very familiar with it, other people might not be. So you have to present it in a way, the little drawing, <coughs> is what, um, so that they would understand. Be creative, open-minded, and innovative. And I think what the most important thing is to continuously communicate what you're doing. Because if you don't, then nobody's going to know about it. Brilliant. Thank you.